Okay, so today I'll be playing the Dungeons & Dragons Legend of Drizzt board game, and this will be adventure number two. This game's been out for over 10 years. I think it's been out 11 years now, so there are tons of videos on YouTube already that show the unboxing of the game and go through detailed tutorials on how to play. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're just interested in watching me play through the game and that you kind of already know how it works. So I'm going, like I said, I'm going to be playing adventure number two. I've already gone through the basic setup, but we can still take a look at what's going on here. So this one's called The Search for Mithril Hall. And it says the ancestral home of Clan Battlehammer is within reach. So the objective is to seek the door that leads into Mith Mithril Hall. Suggested two to five uh, heroes. And they suggest that you use Bruner. Cadabri, Drizzt, Regis, or Wolfgar. So I'll be using Drizzt and Bruner. I attempted to paint Drizzt, but I did a terrible job on it. I might have to strip all the paint off and try again, but I'm tired of having games that aren't painted. Uh, that was my first ever attempt at painting a miniature, so I, I have not attempted to paint Bruner yet. So the adventure setup requires the start tile, which we have, the broken door tile, which I pulled out, the ancient throne tile, which is that one up there, and it requires, uh, what else, the crown token, which I have, the and the Artemis uh, villain card and figure. So I have all that stuff, and that's all up there set aside, except for the... Uh, except for the special tile, the broken door tile, which I've already taken and I've shuffled it into the deck. And the starting wards are two healing surges, and then each hero draws one item from the treasure deck. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And first I will draw for Drizzt, although I believe the rules state that you can give the treasure to either person, but uh, I'll just go ahead and draw for Drizzt. First, so we got a treasure right away, and this treasure is the Scrimshaw Charm. Use this after any dice roll, and you can reroll. Um, okay, that'll be handy at some point. And now we'll draw for Bruner. And we got an item, and we got the Potion of Healing. And this one says that you, your hero or an adjacent hero regains two hit points. So, yeah, pretty good items. And I'm still just playing with the basic deck. I have not yet unwrapped the uh, the advanced cards. I think the rule. I think the game has you do that after like adventure three or four or something like that. And uh, okay, so we have our items. So what's next? And we have our treasure tokens already uh, set. And then the special rules we handle after we reveal the broken door tile. All right, so starting the adventure. Um, again, I've never played this before, so I've never read this. <clears throat> so following a clue found in an ancient tower near the city of Silvery Moon, you have journeyed deep into the Underdark in search of the ancestral home of the Battlehammer clan. Your travels have led you to an ancient cavern near the entry to the Dwarven Citadel. Bruner's search for Mithril Hall is nearly at an end. Meanwhile, the dreaded assassin Artemis Entreri has been given a job. This villain is hunting down Regis for his crimes against Pasha Pook, the leader of a dangerous thieves' guild in the city of Kalimport. It is only a matter of time before Artemis tracks Regis down. Okay, so we'll set this aside. We don't really have to worry about this again until we get to the uh, special tile. And again, I'm using my turn tracker sheets because I think these are super valuable, and I think that they should have included something like this with the game. I have one for Drizzt, one for Bruner. Uh, Drizzt will be starting with 8 health, and Bruner will be starting with 10 all right, so let's begin our turn number one. Um, it doesn't matter really who goes first, so we'll just have Drizzt go first. And we'll have Drizzt go to the edge of this tile, so he's now on an unexplored edge. 
which means we'll draw a tile. And we have a white tile, so that means no encounter, so that's good. But we will always draw a monster, of course. So let me set this aside. Let me put his treasure there, and let's get a monster for Drizzt. And the monster that we got for Drizzt is the Hunting Drake. Okay, so we'll come over here to my stack of monsters, and we'll get the Hunting Drake, which looks like a little dinosaur. And I will place that onto the mushroom pad here. And let's go ahead and update our sheet for Drizzt. So we obviously don't need this. We did move. There's no attack in the first hero phase. There's no opportunity to take a treasure card. We did explore. We got a white tile. We got the hunting drake. We don't have any blessings or conditions yet. Uh, there's no encounter. There will be no villain yet. And the monster will be the hunting drake. Okay, so the exploration phase has ended. We're now in the villain phase. And since there's no encounter, the hunting drake will activate. And it says, if the hunting drake is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a rending bite. Okay, so just based on the way that's worded, uh, it says that he moves adjacent to the closest hero, but he doesn't necessarily have to move to the tile that this hero is on because of, because of the way it's worded. So I can say that he moves here, 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 or here. All those would be adjacent and would fall within the, the correct reading of that particular uh, monster. So we'll just say, you know, logically, I would think that he would just move here and attack. And he's going to attack with those uh, claws. He's going to get a plus eight on that attack. And I brought my dice tower out. Um, I 3D printed this a long time ago, but I just I didn't think about using this for the last game. One problem I have, though, is the space is a bit shallow. Dice tends to bounce out, so I'll have to be, um, have to be careful about that. But I'll give it a couple rolls in my hand, and then I'll just drop it in. And what do we get? Looks like we got a nine. So 9 plus 8 is 17, which is more than enough to pierce Drizzt's armor class, so he will take 1 damage from the Hunting Drake, bringing Drizzt down to 7. Although, let me think, I do have this opportunity to re-roll. But I think I'm probably better off saving that for when I'm attacking. So we'll go ahead and say that Drizzt took that attack. Although, let me think... Just see what all my options are. All right, so we're going to take the damage, and then I'm going to read through my options more carefully in between turns. So Driz takes that damage, bringing him down seven. So that's going to be the end of uh, Driz's villain phase. So now Bruner will activate. And let's see. So what is Bruner's speed? So his speed is five, so he's a bit slower than Driz. And I haven't played with Bruner yet, so I don't know his abilities. He has Headbutt. At the end of your hero phase, you can take one damage to deal one damage to an adjacent monster. Okay. So his, his at-will power requires him to be adjacent, which is pretty typical. And so, let's see. Clan Battle Hammer Shield. Use at the start of your hero phase. So place your... Stance token, and when, while your stance token is on the card, your hero has a plus two bonus to AC. Is there any reason why you wouldn't just want to have that on all the time? At the, does it, can you not attack when you're in stance? Is that, I'll have to read about that. All right, so for now, we're just going to have him move and attack. So he can move five. Let's see if he can get to an unexplored edge while still being within his movement. So he's on this square here. So one, two, three. And then if he cuts the corner, which is legal to do, he can go, so again, one, two, three, four, five. So he can walk over to that mushroom patch, be on an unexplored edge, and still be adjacent to that creature. So that's what we're going to do. So he's gonna move over here to the mushroom patch, turn so that he can face the hunting drake, and he's going to attack it with his at-will power. 
the notched axe, which says, uh, so once during each of your hero phases, if this attack misses, you can use this power against a different, okay, that's cool. All right, so he's going to attack the hunting drake with a plus seven, so the hunting drake's AC is a 14, so we need to get a seven or better. So we'll roll the dice a couple times in our hands, and then we'll drop it in the tower. And he got a four, of course. Got a four. So that's a big miss. And that's going to be the end of Bruner's uh, hero phase. So he didn't use that. He moved. He did attack. He didn't kill anything, so there's no treasure. He, did ex he is exploring. So let's go ahead and explore. Grab a tile. And we'll place... Move him out of the way momentarily. Place this tile down. Put Bruner back where he was. And it's another white tile, so no, no uh, encounter. So that's good. But he does get a monster. And the monster is going to be a spider swarm. So I'll just kind of put that over here. And we'll go to our pile of monsters, grab the spider swarm, and put it onto the mushroom patch. Okay. So, no bless, uh, so it was a white tile, and it was a spider swarm, no blessings that we know of yet, uh, no encounter, no villain, and the spiders will now activate. So the spider swarm, uh, if the spider, okay, so it's not, so if it's within one tile, it moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on that tile with a million venomous fangs. Okay, so uh, normally it would move... Uh, mushroom patch to mushroom patch, but Bruner is on the mushroom patch, so we are free to place it wherever we want. So I'm going to go ahead and just say that it will be, let's say, uh, let's say here. And now it's going to attack Bruner with a million uh, venomous fangs. It's going to get a plus seven on that attack, and if it hits, he will be poisoned. So we'll give the dice a couple roll in our hands, and then drop it in the tower. And yeah, naturally, since we're rolling for the monsters, we roll high. So that's a 13 plus 7, which is 20, which is more than enough to hit Bruner. So Bruner is now poisoned. So I'll grab a poison token, and put that over here near Bruner. And I'll mark him as being poisoned. But he didn't take any damage. So that is going to be it for turn number one of The Legend of Drizzt.